لما يا مخلوق آثرت الجحود كنت معدوما فمن أين الوجود آهي الصدفة أم رب الودود آهي الصدفة أم رب الودود قبله في الكون من بعده بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome again, my dear beloved brothers, my dear sisters, my dear viewers, to another one of our discourses on the tafsir of the Holy Quran. And we had started the surah, which is known as Surah Al Hujarat. We have already covered quite a few verses, approximately 10 verses, 11 verses or so. And we continue with verse 12, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs us and He gives us some prohibitions. As I've mentioned before, Surah Al-Hujrat is a very beautiful surah. Indeed, it's very wonderful in that it teaches us about our social conduct. It teaches us about how we interact with each other, how to behave with each other, including uh, the behavior and conduct towards the immediate family members, the extended family members, neighbors, people in general, you know, including that also is how we behave with other Muslims in the Muslim community. And this is extremely important, as I have mentioned before, because the, the, the Ummah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the Muslim Ummah is one Muslim Ummah. And this, in the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is considered to be one family unit. And if you do not know how to live with each other within the family unit, there will be a lot of breakup, there will be a lot of separation, there will be a lot of disunity and disharmony. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in the beginning of Surah Al-Hujurat, in fact, a few weeks ago, we uh, discussed the ayah in which Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى Certainly all believers are brothers. So Allah has tied us in one brotherhood, <coughs> sharing the bond of iman and faith, which is the strongest bond, as mentioned by the great commentators of the Holy Quran. So in this surah, you know, mention is made about the things which we are required to do to bring about this, uh, to build this relationship, which is the closely knitted relationship called the Ummah, which is the Ummah to Wahida, one Ummah, the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Muslim Ummah. And then at the same time, Allah has pinpointed and highlighted those things that are prohibited for us to do and we are not to do those things because of the fact that these are the things that bring about this harmony this unity it brings brings about this unity in the muslim ummah while bringing about the same in the family unit among uh, family members among friends among people in the community so here the last uh, verse we were discussing <coughs> was uh, verse 12 of surah al hujurat and in that verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to us and he said, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahirrahman ar-rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O those who believe, ijtanibu kathira min al-dhan, refrain much from dhan, suspicions. Refrain from much suspicions. Why? In ba'd al-dhan ithm. It is so because some of the suspicions that you may have or you may entertain, it is actually sinful. Then further, we discussed until that, uh, that part of the ayah last day. Then further to that, Allah says, وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا and do not spy. <coughs> Allah says, and do not spy. And that is what we are actually going to discuss today. So, on the notes that we have made available for you to look at and follow, it is stated the other prohibition which Allah has given in the above verse is that of spying on one another. In this regard, the verse says, وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا And do not spy. That is, do not spy on one another. What Allah says, and do not spy, it means a believer must spy, not spy on other believers. The word used in the above verse is at-tajassus, wala tajassusu, which means the spy. And as such, the prohibition established in it is that Muslims are prohibited from spying on one another. 
The act of tajassus spine in Arabic means to seek or search for matters which are hidden from a person. They are not clear to you, so it's hidden from you, but yet you go after it. And here in the verse it means that a believer must not search for the faults and the defects of other believers and must not go after them in order to find out and look for their faults and deficiencies. Very beautiful introduction of that ayah there, the prohibition which is mentioned, wala tajassasu. So the word used there is tajassus, wala tajassasu. One who does tajassus is called jasus, a spy. And Allah uses the word here, do not spy on one another. As Muslims, you are not allowed to spy on one another. And we all understand the concept of spying, where you are trying to get information that is not readily available to you. You are trying to get it. You are trying to dig into the private matters. You are trying to dig into those matters that are you know, held in a secret manner. Things that are not clear, they are not dhahir and apparent. A person is trying to go after that and find out about that. And generally, it may refer to every single thing where spying generally is prohibited. Searching for information, looking for information, things that do not concern you, you go after that. You, you find out about certain things about a person just to humiliate the person, just to get back at the person. All these different things, you know, fall under that prohibition. But specifically, all the commentators have mentioned, based upon the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they have stated it refers to when Allah says wala tajassasu. The first and immediate understanding is that it refers to all different types of spying, uh, where you are investigating, researching digging in for information and matters that, that have no connection to you and that are not related to you. You have nothing to do with these things, but you are prying into the private matters of other people. Allah says, do not do that to each other. And as I said specifically, what it mentions, what actually it refers to, it means that a believer must not search for the faults and defects of other believers. This is what here it means, you know, do not go after looking for the faults of each other. That as I said, something is not clear to you and apparent. So therefore you want to go after it. You want to dig in into something, looking for the faults of a person, looking for sinful actions that you may have heard that the person commits looking for what the person does in his private life, looking for what a person does in his internal, yani, uh, inside life, where he's at home, where he's not you know, uh, moving around in public, etc. Looking for defects of the person just to publicize it or to tell others about it. This is what it means. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا عَوْرَاتِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Do not go after, digging in, searching. Searching for what? Searching for the defects of others, the Muslims. Searching for the faults of others. Searching to see if you can find some wrongdoing or sin a person committed and you want to, to find out about it and you want to bring it to light in front of other people. All these things there are prohibited and this is what this ayah refers to. Therefore, one must accept <coughs> and take, as it is mentioned, what is apparent and manifest. What is clear to you and what is apparent, take that <coughs> and must not go about searching for faults, shortcomings and defects of the believers. One must not look for a fault or defect of his brother to gain awareness of it when Allah has already concealed it from others. And it's a very beautiful statement Imam Qurtubi has mentioned in his tafsir, tafsir al-Qurtubi, which it is commonly known as, that one, what he says, one must qudu, qudu ma dhahara, take what is apparent. So if you look at a person, 
you see that the person is in a certain way, he's like this, he seems to be good to you, etc. He seems to be good in public. People have good things to say about him. People don't speak about him or her in a bad manner. And this is what is zahir. Zahir means this is what is clear. And this is what is apparent to you and everybody else. So what it means, take that. Suffice with that and satisfy yourself with that much about that individual. Don't go further than that. Don't go further than that. And this is why I say, and must not go about searching for faults. Now, you know that uh, the person may have a good name, a good image in the public, but you, you are not satisfied with that as an individual. You go prying and digging in into private matters now. You go about finding out from others, going to his friends and close family members, and you are asking, what about this person? How is this person? Now, all you are doing, it is actually to go after the faults and looking for the faults of this person. This ayah stops a person from doing that. As it says, one must not look for a fault or defect of his brother to gain awareness and to gain knowledge of it when Allah has already concealed it. In other words, when Allah has concealed something from you and has uh, not made whatever this person may be doing or involved in, he has not made it public. He has not made it known, but Allah has concealed it. Then leave it concealed. Don't bring it out. Don't go after it. Allah has already concealed it. So one should not bring it about. The great scholar Mujahid, he has stated, take that which is apparent and manifest. Satisfy yourself with what is apparent and manifest and leave what Allah has concealed. Subhanallah. Sahal, the great scholar also said, do not go about searching and looking for the faults which Allah has concealed of his servants, as mentioned in Tafsir al-Nasafi. So two important statements that are given from the Aslaf and the Salaf al-Salih and the pious predecessors. One is coming from the great scholar Mujahid, alayhi rahmah. He says, take that which is apparent and leave that which Allah has concealed. Subhanallah. If you don't know about certain matters, and it amounts or it is connected to wrongdoings on the part of a person or connected to sins a person may have committed, but you don't know, you may have heard about it, but you don't know, then leave it. Allah has concealed it, so leave it concealed. That which is apparent, and the good side of a person is apparent to you, so take that. Don't pry into the word, private matters of people. Sahal also, he said, he said, do not go about searching and looking for the faults which Allah has concealed of his servants. Allah has concealed certain matters of people. Obviously, no one from among human beings, they are perfect. No one is perfect. The Anbiya's alayhim salatu wasalam, they are perfect. You know, their, their period has come to an end with the, the, the last messenger, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So besides the Anbiya's from among the other human beings, no one is really perfect. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Kullu bani Adam Every son of Adam, he commits sins. You know, wa khayru tawabuna and the best of those who makes uh, mistakes and commit sins are those who often repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, it means that, you know, sins are committed, mistakes are made. What you don't know, you should leave it like that. You don't know, you don't know. Don't make it your business to find out what, uh, what, what mistake a person does, what defect he has, what faults, what sins he has. So as Sahal is saying, Whatever Allah has concealed, leave it concealed. Allah has concealed things of his servants, then leave it like that. Subhanallah, then don't go after it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has also prohibited the believers from seeking out the faults of other believers and has warned them about it. He has made that very clear. Do not go after looking for the faults of, of the believers, seeking the faults of the believers. Regarding this, the companion Abu Barza al-Aslami radiallahu ta'ala narrated that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O you who have believed with your tongues, but iman and faith has not entered your hearts. 
do not backbite the Muslims and do not seek their faults. For verily, he who seeks their faults, Allah will seek his faults. And if Allah seeks his faults, he, Allah, will humiliate him even in the privacy of his own house. SubhanAllah, hadith recorded in the Sunan of Abu Dawud and the number of hadiths given there. Very beautiful tradition which gives us a lot to think about. The Prophet wasallam spoke once to some people and these people, although they externally had accepted Iman and Islam, yet they used to pry into the private matters of the believers and they will make it their business to try to find out about you know different people and speak about it and spread it you know and, and spread rumors among people about other individuals so allah the allah uh, obviously informed the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about that and the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he spoke to them once and he said Oh, you who have believed with your tongues, yani those people, you have believed with your tongues that your tongues uttered the shahada and the tongue said, Ashhadu ala ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Or the tongue said, La ilaha illallah muhammadur rasuluh. So the tongue believed, <laughs> the tongue accepted iman. But that iman did not go through the throat to enter into the heart so he said and their hearts have not accepted iman this faith and iman that you have actually uttered with the tongue this has not entered into the hearts so he was speaking to these people who behaved in this manner and who has shown that from themselves he said do not la taqtabul muslimin do not backbite the muslims and do not seek their faults. Don't go about looking for their faults and their, 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 their defects and deficiencies. Do not do that. Why? For verily, he who seeks their faults, whosoever goes about seeking out the fault, searching for the faults and defects of other Muslims, looking for it, then Allah will seek out his faults. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will now look for his faults. Allah knows his faults already. But what will Allah do? Allah will bring it out in the public. Before it would have been concealed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have kept it hidden from the eyes and the knowledge of other people. But because an individual begins to go after other people, seeking out, searching and looking for their faults, then because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will now seek out his faults and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says and if Allah seeks out his faults and that person for whom or about whom Allah seeks out his faults Allah will humiliate him even in the privacy of his own house it means that normally when people come out in the open they interact with others they move about uh, they associate with others there and then people will know about them and people will know of their good and their bad and if they're bad through interacting with people when their bad uh, actually is revealed to people there then they become embarrassed and they do not want to associate with other people they do not want to go out in the public so normally humiliation and embarrassment if any that um, of that has to come to a person normally you know it comes uh, to a person when he is mixing and mingling interacting and associating with other people whether it's the work environment or whether it's the the, the masjid a jamaat or in the neighborhood or with family members but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying here that if anybody goes about seeking the faults of other muslims he takes out their faults and he tries to publicize it and make it known to people then Allah will humiliate him even though he is in the privacy of his own home even though he is alone at home and there isn't anyone and he's not mixing and mingling and interacting with people even inside his house Allah will humiliate him 
People will know about that person. People will find out about that person and they will begin to actually look down upon that person. This occurs when a person goes about seeking out the faults of others. In another tradition, it is narrated that the Prophet wasallam said, وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا Do not spy on one another and do not look for others' faults as recorded by Imam Bukhari and Muslim alayhi He said, do not, <coughs> do not spy on one another and do not look for others' faults. So he made special mention about these two separate things. One is do not spy on one another and the other thing is do not go about looking for the faults of others. Subhanallah. In another tradition, Muawiyah, it is stated Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala also narrated that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you seek out and you search for the faults of the Muslims, then you will corrupt them. Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala also narrated that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you seek out and search for the faults of the Muslims, then you will corrupt them. How would you corrupt them? Subhanallah. It means that when a person goes about searching and looking for the faults of others, which are private and hidden, and then makes it public or known among others, this will lead to shamelessness, qillatul haya, on the part of those who do wrong, and they will eventually become bold in doing wrong actions. This is a very beautiful tradition here where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warns us. He says, if you go about seeking the faults of others and you want to find out about the wrongdoings of others and you want to find out about the defects and deficiencies of other people and you want to find out about what problems they have and they give to people uh, wh while these things may be in private, while these things may be hidden from you, you don't know about it. But, but you make it your business to go after these things. Why? To actually publicize it, to make it known among other people. Then the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you go about doing these things, then you will corrupt the people. Why? Because when you begin to bring out in the open their private matters, and they begin to hear about it, then it will lead them to become, to become bold in doing the same things. In other words, until then, they would have done something within the confines of their home. And they thought to themselves, nobody knew about it. Allah kept it hidden and private. So they will continue to do it within the home circle or within whatever, wherever they live. You know, uh, in privacy, they will do it. And me, people will know about it, would know about it because it is kept hidden. But when you reveal what they do and many people know about it now, they will think to themselves, well, people already know about it. Why conceal it <laughs> anymore? And they will become bold in doing wrong things. And who would have been the cause for that? The people who went after searching for their faults to bring it and to actually make it known to other people. This is why the Prophet wasallam said, if you go about seeking the faults and the defects or wrongdoings of other people, which are normally hidden, and you begin to, to, to find out about it, <coughs> and spread it amongst people, what will happen? You will corrupt them. Then they will actually have qillatul haya, shamelessness will come about. And they will do it in public and it will be worse for the com community. From, so from the above teachings of the verse and the hadith, it becomes clear that it is not permissible for a Muslim to reveal what another person does privately or in secret and must not search for the faults of others. Subhanallah. It states, from the above teachings of the verse and ahadith, it becomes clear that it is not permissible for a Muslim to reveal what another person does privately or in secret and must not search for the faults of others. He must also not investigate the faults or sins of others. He must also not investigate the faults or sins of others. Since all of these are known as spying on others, which is totally prohibited in Islam. Subhanallah. So this is a very important thing we need to take note of. One, that 
the, from the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا and do not spy on each other and the few ahadith which have been mentioned here from these it becomes clear and it becomes well established that it is not permissible for a Muslim to reveal what another person does privately or in secret. In other words, if for some reason one person, you know that a person has done something and that was done in a private manner and that was done in privacy or he did it in a manner that it was a secret between him and another person but you became aware of it. He may have told you about it or she may have told you about it. So here is it. You have knowledge about something. It is a fault. It was a fault on his part or another person's part. Probably it was a mistake he made. Probably it was a sin he committed, major or minor. For whatever reason it was done, it was not done in public. It was done in a private manner. And not many people uh, knew about it from before and not many people knew about it at present. But you happen to know about it because you were there or you were informed. Now, seeing that you have that knowledge, then if this is a private matter, let private be private. Do not reveal his fault. Do not go after spreading that which you know about the person to other people. It may not be public. It may not be that you are make it no, making it known to many people. But for ju just for you to tell one person is sufficient for that to reach out to many. Now you are going to reveal the faults of another person. A person must be careful that by doing that, Allah may reveal his faults. As the hadith says, Allah will reveal his faults. So this is the first thing we know. So what we have been discussing before is that the, the, the Quran mentions and the hadith mentions, do not go after the faults, searching for and looking for the faults of other people. But this also is evident from those teachings, that if you know of a fault of a person, you know of a sin he has committed, you know it already, it's not that you are now going to find out, you know it already for whatever reason, do not let it move further away from your own self. Do not. Because you will be, this is a type of spying where you are revealing the faults, publicizing it, carrying about information about a person which will cause that person humiliation and embarrassment. And if you do anything that brings the humiliation and embarrassment of a person, then Allah will humiliate you even though you are in the most private chamber of your house. That's one. And uh, must not search for the faults of others. Don't search for it. A person is good. Do not let shaitan make you think that I wonder if this person is genuine, authentic. Let me find out about this person. If you are going to go into a business deal with the person, yes, your job is to find out because this is a person you are going to invest your money with. If it is a matter of marriage, yes, you need to find out about the person before you get involved with a person in a marriage, you know, and any other sort of long-term relationship and association, then you need to. But generally speaking, just to go about finding out about people's faults, digging and prying into their private life, this is not something that is permissible. First, further than this, it says, he must also not investigate the faults or sins of others. No, don't do that. Since all of these are known as spying on others, which is totally prohibited in Islam. One, a Muslim must not go about investigating the faults or sins of others. So, it may happen that you learn of a sin which was committed by someone you know, probably in the jamaat or probably in the family members. You heard that somebody committed a sin, somebody did something wrong, somebody has a fault, and that is said to you. Now, it's none of your business. And then finding out has nothing to do with you. It's not that somebody has made you a mediator or somebody has made you an arbitrator, you know, to bring about some peaceful reconciliation be between people where in that case you will have to find out what's the truth. But just like that, you learn of something. You make it your business now to investigate that which the person did. This is none of your business. Why are you investigating? This is, um, uh, it amounts to spying. 
this has nothing to do with you if the person did something and it's not made public and by by some way or the other per chance by chance you've got to hear about it don't go make it your business to actually investigate you know uh, that issue and that matter of the person Allah has kept it concealed leave it concealed if it is something that concerns you, if somebody brought some information to you uh, and because of something they did wrong, it created some sort of problem in the home circle between a husband and wife, parents and children, and they have asked you to mediate between them. Now you have to find out the facts so that you can actually um, try to make some sort of reconciliation between them. But besides that, generally speaking, you know, what people normally do, it is not really about becoming a, an arbitrator, an avatar, or, or, or like a mediator between people. Okay? So that is a very, very important thing we need to know about that. Now, sometimes people try to find out uh, yeah, private matters of other people. This also falls under the prohibition. So at times, two people may be having a conversation and you are somewhere sitting around. They see that you are engaged in your work. You may be behind the computer. You may be writing something. You may be doing your work. And they, they believe or they think that you are busy and occupied in your work. You may not really pay attention or listen to what they are saying. But you are now silently, without them knowing anything, you are eavesdropping and listening to their conversation. This is totally prohibited. It's not permissible at all. Or somebody is in a room or people are in a room discussing something and you, you are so, you know, uh, you so want to know what is being discussed. You come close and you put your ears to the walls or the door trying to uh, actually here or you might be in the room and you kind of so-called make yourself look like you are occupied in something doing something here and there while you are really listening to them or it may even happen that at home or in the community or in the jamaat in the masjid somewhere you are something is being discussed two people are discussing something they see you over there they see that you are sleeping, they believe you are sleeping and they begin to discuss their private matter. And you are fully awake and you intentionally play you are sleeping so they will think you are sleeping just for you to listen to their private conversation. All these things are totally prohibited. They all fall into the category of spying. And what as the scholars have stated, at the justice in Arabic, it means to get information which is normally kept private from you. It is kept hidden from you. It is kept away from you. So the reason they are discussing a private matter is before, because they think you might be sleeping. You are not aware. But yet you are fully aware and you do not disclose that to them. If that's the case and you think they are going to speak about some private matter and they want some privacy, let them know that you'll just take leave and you will move out. You know, so that these are very, very important guidelines that we need to know. These things are all prohibited. So when they are prohibited, it means if we do them, we will become sinful. We will become sinful if we do them because they are all prohibited. And this is the extent to which the Sharia guides us in doing those things that will preserve the unity and harmony among the Muslim Ummah and among people in general. So I see it's time for us to take a short break. So we'll stop there and inshallah after this short break we'll continue. <laughs> Eat 
healthy and stay positive with All Snacks Omega-3. Enjoy almonds filled with vitamin E, healthy fats and fiber. Walnuts may decrease bad cholesterol, lower blood pressure and provide diabetic support. Amp up your vitamin B1 with pecans. Pumpkin seeds are rich in iron, protein and zinc. Dried cranberries are an antioxidant, heart-healthy superfood. Boost your immunity with Omega-3 Mix. All Snacks, a healthier choice. Need to replace your windshield? Think about safety. Think about Double Z. At Double Z, we supply OEM quality windshields and OEM adhesives. Our friendly and efficient staff awaits you. Double Z's technicians are internationally certified to bring your vehicle back to factory standard. Relax in our executive lounge while your windshield is being replaced. Free mobile service at your home, office, or repair shop. Visit us at Gasparillo or Valsane or call 645-9585 or 6500093. Double Z, the windshield people. Eat healthy and stay positive with All Snacks Omega-3. Enjoy almonds filled with vitamin E, healthy fats and fiber. Walnuts may decrease bad cholesterol, lower blood pressure and provide diabetic support. Amp up your vitamin B1 with pecans. Pumpkin seeds are rich in iron, protein and zinc. Dried cranberries are an antioxidant, heart-healthy superfood. Boost your immunity with Omega-3 Mix. All Snacks, a healthier choice. Low cost, the name says it all. When you are shopping for families, large or small, at low cost supermarket, Southern Main Road, Canopia, our spacious aisles ensures comfort and convenience. Our grocery items and garden produce are regularly replenished to offer only the finest quality items. Pay utility bills or do money transfers through our Western Union Bill Payment Center. We offer spacious parking. So visit low cost supermarket and become a contented customer. Low cost supermarket, Southern Main Road, Canopia, 665-346. Sonas, a name significant over many years in upholstering, whether it's automotive, marine, household or office. At Sonas Upholstering Center, our in-house team of experts can create a design using the best, highly durable and attractive material to gain your confidence and approval for a finished job, leaving customers and staff equally satisfied. Call or come and visit Sonas Upholstering Center, 61 Montrose Main Road, Chaguanas or phone 665-4556. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome again to the segment, to the second segment of this program. Um, that is our daras on this course on the tafsir of the Holy Quran. So, so what we have seen so far, based on the eye of the Holy Quran, that's verse 12 of Surah Al Hujurat and the Ahadith, is that about uh, the prohibition regarding prying into the private matters of other people, uh, going and searching you know, for their faults, defects, sins, etc. Further, it states, you know, in the commentary here, as a Muslim, one must conceal the faults and sins of other Muslims when he has knowledge of these. What it states, as a Muslim, one must conceal the faults and sins of other Muslims when he has knowledge of these. While speaking about this, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala reported, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A servant does not cover the faults of another servant in the world, except that Allah will cover his faults on the day of judgment. As is recording Sahih Muslim, a servant does not cover the faults of another servant in the world, except that Allah will cover his faults on the day of judgment. So the first statement here says, as a Muslim, one must conceal the faults and sins of other Muslims when he has knowledge of these. What we have discussed before is investigating other people, it's prohibited, going after them in order to search for and look for their faults, sins, defects, and to dig into such matters. These things were prohibited. But there, there may come a time where you actually know the fault of another person. You know this person 
uh, consumes intoxicants. You know that person is guilty of zina. You know that person, he actually is involved in, in some sort of sinful action like gambling. But many people do not know. So when you already know about the sins of others, or you know about the faults that other people have, what do you do with that? The Sharia guides us and says, conceal it. Don't publicize it. Don't make it known among people. So there are two things. One is that you are prohibited from going after in order to search for the faults of other people. So that's a case where you don't know, but you want to find out more. You may have heard, but you don't know. You want to find out more. This is totally prohibited. This is spying on other people. And further than that is that you may know about something because you see it, because you were there, because this person might be your family, a family member, or might be your close friend, but it's just that he happens that you know, he has certain bad habits. So if you know, then conceal the fault, conceal it, okay? While speak, but we must know about to what extent we are allowed to conceal it. In other words, you may know a person, a practical thing. You may have a friend. People grow up in the same community. You grow up. You continue to uh, practice your deen and your Islam. But your friend may be, in Awuzubillah, he may become a person who is using the unlawful substance. You know, and he's addicted to that. And somebody, some parents come to you and say, my daughter has gotten a proposal from such and such person. Um, can you tell us if he's a good person or not? No. <laughs> if you don't say something to let them know about that individual, then you can cause a lot of problems. Because then a marriage may take place and this person is a drug addict. And then that's the whole life of the other person. Then a lot of problems may come after. So therefore, we must know generally, concealing the faults, it is required. However, there are certain cases where people, people try to get information from us regarding things that are extremely important in their life. And they may use you as a witness. When you are used as a witness, to give some sort of testimony or some sort of statement, now that falls in a different bracket. It's no longer about this here now. It's about as a witness, are you going to lie or are you going to speak the truth? If you are put on the oath, would you on the oath lie? Somebody says, I give you the name of Allah. I implore you by the name of Allah. I make you swear on Allah's name. Tell me, do you know about this? Do you know? So you can't lie. Okay, so we have to always know when we can give information, but that given information is not on account of spying. It is not about revealing the faults of others, but it's because of a shari'i matter that we are required to fulfill. That, that is very, very important. And this is why, you know, when a case comes up between people and you are called as a witness, a witness for either party and in court you are questioned and you are put on the oath you cannot lie you cannot go there and after being put on the oath you lie and then you use these ahadis to say oh, well i can't reveal the faults of my 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 brother or my family member no you are you are on the oath that's a different thing now you may be uh, called before a qazi and the qazi questions you you can't lie to a qazi you can't lie in an Islamic court. You can't lie, lie even when you are called upon to see a, something. Some issue has occurred. You have seen something and you are not seeing anything under the what, ju you know, uh, justification of you can't reveal. We must know. This is why ilm and knowledge is very important to know when these things are applicable and when they are not applicable. So, therefore, it is about generally speaking about so when we, we speak about these matters here, about sins and wrongdoing, we, we understand that because this has become a common thing in society where people, they, they actually, you know, in this day of, uh, you know, uh, the social media and modern day technology where whatever you know of a person, you just write it and you circulate it. 
if you see a person is in a certain place and, and, and he is in that place or she is in that place and because the person is, is in privacy, you take out a picture and, and you circulate it, this is spying on the person. This is totally haram. This is what you know, we, we have to understand. So if you have knowledge about something of the person there, then conceal that, subhanAllah. Don't spread the bad name of that person. Do not cause embarrassment and humiliation uh, you know, to, to the other people in this way by revealing their faults and deficiencies. So about this concealing the faults, the Prophet wasallam said, a servant does not cover the faults of another servant in the world except that Allah will cover his faults on the day of judgment. In another hadith, Uqba bin Amir radiallahu ta'ala narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever conceals the fault of a Muslim, it is as if he has revived an infant girl buried alive from her grave. Subhanallah. Imam Bukhari has mentioned that in his famous work, Adab al-Mufrad. Imam Abu Dawud has mentioned that also in the Sunan, his you know, a book of hadith. So whosoever conceals the fault of a Muslim, remember we are speaking about faults and sins and wrongdoings. We are not talking about court matters where you are, you have become an official witness, you are asked to testify, you know, and all these things. No, we are speaking about, you know, the sins that you may see a person committing or some sinful activity or action a person was involved in and you know about that. You may have seen it this is what we are talking about. And here it says, whosoever conceals the fault of a Muslim. So you know somebody is guilty of this sin, you know, and uh, that's something between him and Allah. So therefore, don't go about, you know, spreading the bad name of that person. But if you conceal it, you will get the thawab and the blessings and reward as if you have revived the infant girl. You know, during the, the time... Uh, of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam before his time and even during his time until you know it came it actually alhamdulillah came to an end where they used to bury their girl children alive you know so if a person conceals the fault in this hadith of another Muslim he will get the thawab as if actually he has revived an infant girl who was buried alive he took her out and give her back alive then so much thawab and blessings he will get for that so this is based upon, this is a commentary given on, the, on that prohibition which Allah says, وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا and do not spy on each other. Further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in Surah Al-Hujrat, in the same ayah, neither backbite one another. Neither backbite one another. That is, and some of you must not backbite some. The ayah in the Quran is, وَلَا يَغْتَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا and let not some of you backbite some. Yani backbite others. Here the prohibition of, backbite, of backbiting is given and the believers have been informed by Allah that they must not backbite one another. That's a clear cut prohibition which Allah has given in the Quran here. So backbiting is not only prohibited from the ahadith of the Prophet wasallam directly from the Quran, it is strictly prohibited. And it is one of those sins that the one who is uttering it and the one who is listening to that, both of them are equal in the sin. So the, 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 the one who actually engages in backbiting and the one who listens to that backbiting, both of them are equal in sin, as said by the Prophet ﷺ. It goes further in the Sharan commentary to say, in order to teach his companions and followers what backbiting is, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala narrated that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once asked the sahabas and the companions, do you know what backbiting is? He wanted for them to get the proper understanding of backbiting. They replied, Allah and his messenger know best. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is that you mention about your brother with that which he dislikes. That you mention something about your brother, another Muslim, with that which he dislikes. One of the companions said, what if the thing mentioned is in my brother? Somebody said, oh Prophet of Allah, what if the thing I mentioned about my brother, it's really in him. So I'm speaking the truth, it's there. The Prophet sallallahu said, if what you have mentioned about him is found in him, 
then you have backbitten him. You have actually committed the crime and the sin of backbiting. And if it is not found in him, then you have slandered him. Then you have slandered him. So what we realize, what we see in this hadith is that the Prophet wasallam wanted his followers and all the Muslims to get a proper understanding of backbiting. Why? Because if people are left on their own, everybody will give his definition for backbiting and the definition will be given in a way that he will want to show or she will want to show that they are not backbited. So many people, some, you hear from them that where they are speaking bad about someone, they are saying bad things about another one. And when they are told, you should not say that, that's backbiting. They say, no, 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 I'm not backbiting. I'm not backbiting. Um, this is really what the person did. This is what is in the person, so I'm not backbiting. So this is the tendency of many people to always become involved in, 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 in sins of this nature. But then actually they, they say we are not backbiting. So the Prophet wasallam wanted us to understand and the entire Ummah to understand what really is backbiting. So when he asked the question and the Sahabas radiallahu ta'ala whom submitted that Allah wa Rasuluhu alam, Allah and his messenger, they know best. He said, it is that you mention something about another person, your brother. The word used there is a khaqa. Dhikruka a khaqa bima yakrahu. It is your mentioning of your brother of that which he dislikes. It means you are saying something about another Muslim, male or female. You are saying something that if this person hears you, hears that you said it, or they hear you are saying it in front of them, they will detest it. They will dislike it. They will feel bad about it. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that is backbiting. So the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, Messenger of Allah, if what we are saying is really in him, in kana fihi ma'qul, the question was, if in him is really what I said. So if I said he does this, it's really in him. He does it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, that exactly is backbiting. Backbiting doesn't mean lying. Backbiting is not slandering. Backbiting is not making up tales and fabricating things about another person. Backbiting is about saying that which is really in, in him. However, if he hears that you are saying it and you have uttered it, that person will become displeased and he will actually hate that that be mentioned. This is backbiting. So the Prophet says, if in him is really what you mention about him or her, then that is backbiting. وَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ فِيهِ فَهُوَ بَهْتَان فَقَدْ بَهَتَّهُ The hadith says, and if in him is not to be found what you have mentioned about him. So if you uttered or said something about a person and what you have said is really not in the person, then you have slandered the person, you have lied against him, you have laid a false allegation and accusation against him, so you have slandered the person. So therefore, it falls under one of two crimes. Either it is backbiting or it, it is either slandering. And both are major sins in Islam. So the Prophet wasallam clarified a very important matter there which we all should take note of to know that we must not say something about a person which you are not ready to say in front of him. In fact, people have the tendency of speaking about a person and if they see that person is coming in their direction, they change the topic. They change the topic. They begin to say something else. They do not want that person to hear what they are saying. The question is why? Something is wrong in what you are saying. Isn't that so? This is why you may change the topic. And you may tell the person, oh, so-and-so is coming. Let's, let's talk about something else. People behave like that. So why? That's the question. If what you were saying is something good, then why change the topic? Why stop? Why actually become, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, kind of, you know, uh, uh, feeling bad about what you are saying that you change the topic? Why? 
So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says. So what we see here, based upon the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we see that what many people do, it's really backbiting when they say, "I'm not backbiting." It is because what they say and then they say, "I'm not backbiting." It's really in the person. The person really did it, you know. Then that is backbiting. And if you say something that is not if that is not in that person, then then that slandering which is totally prohibited, also. So I see it's eight o'clock now. It's time we normally stop our session here, uh, because there are other programs there, um, you know, for, uh, the studio to show the channel to show. Sorry. Um, so we will close there, and inshallah we will continue uh, next Monday. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.